All right, welcome back to the channel. My name is Lian Duan, and I'm a content creator based here in Maryland. My goal with the channel is to be a resource to DevOps creative thought, tutorials behind the screen's content, and owners' podcasts. So if you are into that sort of thing, make sure you subscribe to join the Creative Crew. It really goes a long way towards supporting this channel, and make sure that you never miss out. Our video related to Markdown and YAML files are in my GitHub. The links are in below. I start new videos for Kubernetes security from DevOps view. So far we learned Kubernetes role-based access control and how to use RBAC to fix ELK deployment issue. Also we did find a minimum base Docker images, reduce OS packages, use Docker multi-state build to reduce Docker image size. Today, we are going to talk about how to run Docker containers as non-root user. Video topic is my demo environment detail. Why do not run Docker container as root user? How to run Docker container as non-root user? Also, I show hands-on demo how to debug a hardened Docker container. First topic, my demo environment detail. My demo environment is on Oracle Linux server version 8.4. Let me remote log in my box. My Docker version is 20.10.6. Check command is Docker space version. The version is highlighted. Let me run docker hyphen compose space version to check my Docker compose version. Docker compose version is 1.27.4. Let me close the terminal. I will change the Docker image Lian Duan training select Spring Boot demo v7 to show how to run Docker container as non-root user. If you like to know the detail of the Docker image, please go to the video Monitoring React App, Spring Boot App, and Redis with permissions. We move to next topic. What is wrong with the containers run as root user? There are so many reasons do not run all your process as root. Just because the process is in a container does not mean it's completed, protect. If there are vulnerability in the application, then attacker can gain root access into the container. And so, inside the container, the user is root. He can do whatever he wants in the container. Potentially, install additional tools to have period to other devices or containers. If there are vulnerability in Docker or the kernel itself, allow your process inside the container to break out. Then they now have a process running in your environment as root. Game over. The principle of least privilege is a subject should be given only those privileges needed for it to complete its task. If a subject do not need the access right, the subject should not have the right. There are two views from privileges, inside and outside the container. Privilege inside the container. One of the key agreements to avoid a wrong container as root is to provide a privilege exclusion. A root user inside the container can basically run every command as root user on traditional host system, such as install software packages, start services, create users, etc. From application perspective, this is undesirable. Next view, outside the container. Privilege exclusion. In case of a container breakout, the root user can access and execute anything on the underlying host as a highly privileged user. That means system mount is a risk. Hacker can access the host to connect other services, install unwanted malware, and access other cloud resources. After we know why do not run root user in container, how to do it? We jump into next topic, how to run containers as non-root user. It's best to create a non-root user inside image has fixed UID. UID means user ID. The UID number should be more than 1000. Please avoid using the same UID in your underlying system. The screenshot 
show how do I create a non-root user in my Spring Boot demo Docker file. The run command add a microservice group and create the same user microservice under the microservice group. The UID is uh, 1111. Hyphen R means do not create a user home folder. And then make the microservice user has a application file owner folder. Next step, switch the user from root user to microservice. The microservice user working folder is app folder. The port number is 1999. Container start command is java hyphen jar space slash application folder and the slash runnable jar file name. Let me log into my boss to build the image. Go md folder first and jump into the docker spring boot folder. The command is docker build. Do not use cache. The tag is lian duan training slash spring boot demo version is v8. Build folder is the current folder. The Docker image use multi-stage build to reduce Docker image size. If you want to know how to reduce Docker image size to enhance security, please click link in the top corner. We have a hardened Docker image that do not include any debug tool and run as non-root user. We will run to a Spring Boot demo microservice error. How do we debug it? Close my terminal. The latest topic for today, how to debug hardened Docker container. My app has three layers, React UI layer, Spring Boot app microservice layer, and Redis database layer. The video monitoring React app, Spring Boot app, and Redis with Prometheus has more detail about my app. Also, the video include Prometheus is monitoring three layers. Let me use Docker Compose app to start my all containers. Go to YAML folder, run Docker Compose app, space, hyphen D means running in background. All containers are up. When you get a Spring Boot app microservice offline email alert message from Prometheus, how to analyze the issue? First step, you will be go through the Spring Boot app log file. If you find the root cause, you can fix it. If not, next step, go inside the container and check. Let me log into the container as a root user because hardened Docker container does not have debug tool. Maybe after I log in, I need to install some tools to help me analyze. The login command is docker esec open interact terminal. The user is root. Spring Boot is container name. Login point is slash bin slash sh. Let me run curl command to verify the endpoint API status. The command is curl localhost port number 1999. The endpoint pass users. The endpoint able to retrieve all current users from the microservice. Curl no found. Since the Docker image is hardened, there are no any debug to install. I have to run apt space install space curl to install the command. Command install successfully. Next, try add one user record. Add the user information successfully. Next, try to retrieve the user first name and last name. The microservice looks good. You are able to continue to follow the same pattern to do more debug to figure out why we receive the permissive alert email. In other scenario, if your company do not allow access container in production environment, you can try to run BusyBox container to analyze the issue. There is a detail to how to add the BusyBox container. Service name is BusyBox. Container name is BusyBox. Image use the BusyBox image latest version. The command used to keep the BusyBox running. When you open the docker compose.yaml file under the YAML folder, there is a detail for the BusyBox. Next step, find the Spring Boot microservice IP address. Open the docker plugin. Go to the network tab. Open the premises. Spring Boot 
container IP is a 172.19.0.9 and go inside the BusyBot container, attach shell. The attach shell equal to the docker space ECC command. Run wget command. The endpoint is Spring Boot container IP address. Port number is 1999. Endpoint path is slash users. We are able to access the endpoint. Let me check the result. Cat users, the result is correct. As now, I believe you are able to use BusyBot container to continue analyze the issue. All topics are completed. Today, I shared why do not run in container with the root user and how to do it. Also, run hands-on demo, how to debug in Docker hardened container. Thanks for watching the video. I hope it was help. And it was. Do not forget to like it. If you want to be notification of new videos come out, then subscribe to my channel. If you have any question or something was not clear in the video, please post them in comment section below. I'll try to answer. Thank you and see you in the next video.